During World War II, the Idaho National Laboratory was the Naval Proving Ground. It was an area where the Navy could prove its specific guns. It was also an area where there were bombing targets, where uh, the Army could fly practice missions out of the Pocatello Army Air Base and uh, practice uh, B-24, B-17 bombing runs. And so on the evening of January 8, 1944, uh, B-24 Liberator actually was flying one of these practice runs around Middle Butte and, and crashed, killing all seven men. It left from Pocatello Army Air Base. Uh, in fact, it most likely at some point in the aircraft's life was housed in this hangar here. It went out one evening uh, on a training mission over the bombing range and they had engine trouble and uh, got into a stall spin situation and uh, recovered, uh, but uh, at that point, the tail ripped off the airplane and it spun out of control and, and uh, they crashed and everyone on board was killed. As archaeologists um, at the INL, we, we didn't know about this, this wreckage until we were contacted by Mark McDonald with Project Remembrance. He contacted us almost 70 years to the day of the wreck. Uh, we couldn't get out here for two months. But within that two-month period, we were able, using satellite imagery, and after looking at the accident report and eyewitness accounts from sheep herders who were actually camped out here January 8, 1944, uh, we were able to find a, a small area, to find a small area, and after only an hour and a half of, of walking out on this landscape, we actually found this wreckage. This one, actually, I couldn't believe how fast we found it. It was, I think I told all the archaeologists that that was a, a textbook example of, <laughs> of how it should go. So we were all pretty excited and uh, we were finding, you know, a lot of twisted metal. It was a really tight site. It wasn't uh, spread over a large area. We figured maybe the plane had just pancaked. And it had burned and um, things like melted aluminum, twisted cables, a lot of gauges, uh, just a lot of debris. And uh, we were kind of all looking around through the, the wreckage and, and I found a, a class ring. It was a class ring from 1935 and it had initials engraved on the inside of it. And when I found it, you know, I just said, oh my gosh, you guys, I found a class ring. And everybody got real quiet and it just, it got, it had a different feel to it. And um, we all kind of were humbled by that. And, and after looking around the wreckage more, we found uh, the lieutenant's bars. Uh, we found a key to a, to a locker, a money clip. And it just, it made it real. And it made it sad. I, it wasn't a, we, nobody had a dry eye that day. So after, after we looked at this ring and realized that there were initials engraved on the inside of it, we all wanted to know who it belonged to. We knew the name of the seven people who had perished on, in this crash. And so it started the journey of really researching these men and their families. I had the accident report uh, that I got from the Air Force and it had a list of all the, the crew members. And, uh, you know, I started at the top and went down the list and contacted tried to contact uh, family members uh, that, that were related to each of the, the flyers that were on board. And uh, I believe uh, uh, George Pierce's family was uh, one of the last ones I contacted. I uh, pretty much had gone down the whole list and I, I talked to uh, Malcolm Pierce who I believe was the nephew of George, and uh, he told me I had the right family, and he gave me uh, Nancy's phone number. Uh, we knew that the initials didn't fit anybody on the crew. Uh, the archaeologist pointed out that it was a woman's ring. We knew it didn't belong to any of the flyers. Uh, so, you know, it, it had to belong to some relative of one of the crewmen. You know, when Holly found the, um, 
centerpiece of the ring that had the initials of the high school on it, you know, that and and uh, Nancy's mother's initials on the ring, I mean, that clinched it, you know. This gentleman called and he said um, who he was and where he, where he was, that he was in Pocatello, Idaho, and that he is a historian and that he researches or goes looking for um, World War II plane crashes. And I said, okay, and you know, I didn't know. I, I was, you know, is this a scam or, you know, what's gonna go on? But he has a really nice voice, and so then he proceeded to tell me that he had talked to my cousin Malcolm, and that's how he found me. Um, so then I knew everything was fine. Um, and Malcolm, my cousin, told him, you know, you have to contact Nancy because she's his daughter. Then he went into the story um, about how the uh, archaeologists had found my uh, uh, found a ring, and I and I said okay, and he said. Um, it has, nine, it's a class ring, and it has 1935 on it. And I said, well, that's the year my mom graduated. And he said, the initials on it are WHHS, William Hall High School. And I said, I said that, I said, that's her high school. And he said, inside, their initials are MAH. And I said, well, that's Madeline of Althea Hopkins. I said, I guess it's my mom's ring. So then I, I think then I told him that um, I knew that I had, from the family and from hearing things that my dad wore that as a lucky charm. So after we were in contact with Nancy Gavallis, uh, we'd all talked to her. We all had started developing a relationship with her, talking to her on the phone, emailing her and things like that. And, and we knew that we needed to get her out here on site. Uh, we wanted to bring her out here for closure for everybody. And uh, it, was, it was great bringing her out to the site, her reactions, um, what it meant to her and the relationships that it's established that we're still maintaining today. I was very nervous when we got there because, you know, to see and, and nervous, wondering, you know, how I was going to feel. But as I'm walking out there, I had this real calm feeling come over me. And it was like, I don't know, I can't explain it. It was just very calming. And um, we proceeded to walk out and um, I could look, you know, looked at the site and the wreckage and how far it was scattered, you know, the plane when it had crashed, how, how much, you know, how far away it, and then right up to where they found the ring. And I just had the feeling that mom and dad were probably looking down and smiling. But it was, um, it was something I surely will never forget. The rediscovery of the B-24 crash site um, was really timely in terms of illuminating the value of the National Historic Preservation Act at the Idaho National Lab. We're all in the process um, of documenting the landscape associated with World War II at that time. It was part of mitigation under the National Historic Preservation Act for the removal of some of the buildings and structures like this 1940s flagpole and the red brick buildings behind me. Those materials are no longer useful in this modern landscape and so they have to be removed and mitigation is careful documentation of them before they're, before they're gone. The B-24 crash site put a really unique human dimension into that historic American landscape survey that we were completing. It told a human story of the activities that were going on during World War II at the time. Archaeological sites from the modern period are amazing in the detail they can provide and the connections that they can actually provide to living people. The B-24 crash, as an example, Nancy has turned what was a tragic event into a rallying point for some really special memories for her family and some inspiration perhaps for herself. Mark has taken the site and turned it into not a, not a place of tragedy, but a place of honor. So these, these modern archaeological sites are amazing in the detail they can provide and the connections they can provide for us. I've been really lucky to be part of the, the investigation of the site and the careful documentation of it. That's part of my job. That's what we do under the National Historic Preservation Act. We document the human stories behind the artifacts that we find. As an archaeologist, 
you know, you, you, the excitement of your job um, keeps you going and uh, the thrill of discovery. And you don't really think about the personal uh, element to it. But Nancy said something when she was interviewed that really has stayed with me. And that is um, that she knew what archaeology was, but it really had never interested her. And she really never dreamed that an archaeologist would change her life. And so I love, I love knowing that my job has actually impacted somebody in that way.